guys, I'm here in uh, Dave Days in Lithuania. Together with me is Chris. We just had a panel about security, Gen AI, and security for data science. It was a fascinating um, panel. Chris, do you want to tell about yourself? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, my name is Krzysztof Konkol, and I'm a, a social architect and chief of data engineering department in Zibia, uh, in its Polish uh, part. And I'm basically focused on AI technologies, uh, data privacy as well, uh, but also very much involved in Gen AI. One of the topics that you are going to talk about tomorrow is about privacy in data. So usually when end users look about privacy, they are look from the regulation perspective, like GDPR and yes. stuff. How do you think privacy affect the developer day-to-day -day life? Uh, well, it strongly uh, affects uh, how the software is actually developed because uh, most of the rules uh, which are under covers all of these GDPR regulations which are user-centric are in fact developer-centric uh, but it affects all the software development life cycle. So not only software development but also the deployment strategies, release strategies, uh, maintenance and incident management. Uh, design and everything which is around software development. So if you have that in mind, then uh, this basically means that you change your approach to soft develop software development as a whole. So you have to, there, there is a very nice rule saying that the security, that you are developing a software uh, security centric. So you have the security and data privacy in mind, always. So you think the privacy um the privacy perspective should be holistic across the whole software development lifecycle, not only how do we do PII on their database or how do we get consent from user. It should be holistic from the first day that you design your software yes. to the moment that you actually deliver it to production. Even further, even when you maintain it. Because the, the, the thing is that the holistic approach for me means a lot of detailed things like keeping PIIs in the database, how do you encrypt them and these kind of things. How do you design the infrastructure to be to make it safe, reliable and uh, secure uh, and uh, not vulnerable to attacks and these kind of things. So all the things that are very detailed, but they conform a good, the, the big picture and the holistic approach for everything. Uh, is it? I, I think that's great. And one of the perspectives that I like to... Uh, think about um, PII and privacy is from my uh, topic that's close to my heart, which is fine-grained authorization. We see that mm -hmm. authorization and permissions are getting from just, you know, have a role on a user and get permissions for something, but also to protect the resources, to have a fine-grained, as it sounds, right? Yep. To have a better resolution on what we are allowing or not allowing uh, users to do. You mean like role-level security and field-level security? Uh, exactly, exactly, Ken. Uh, yes, so how do you think this uh, privacy affect this field? A Just lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. This usually when people start to think about, in my from my experience, when they start to think about the uh, permissions in the system, they start to think simple, like we have five roles in the system, and this like admins can do everything. Uh, these uh, typical employees can do these these things, and that's all. But at the end of the day. They go through the role-based access control, uh, the access control list, the attribute-based access control, and at the end of the day, what they end up is a complex policy system. It's like we have, on, for instance, on AWS. You don't have just a simple role saying you can do this and that. It's just a complex policy, system, policy roles where you can say you can do something on RDS, but not on the whole RDS, but on a specific database, on a specific resource. So once you have it very fine-grained, but also very complex to interpret, because this is a trade-off. You have to create a separated software or separated logics that is focused on how to interpret this uh, or how to parse these complex policies. Then you're probably at the end of your road and at the end of your way. So you can, you can then just say that you can do everything. But the problem is, and the issue is, this is on the other side of the coin, is that uh, customers or users of the system do not usually want to spend time on configuring permissions. And that's the big, the big problem, big issue. So if I sound you correctly, you're saying that 
the biggest challenge in privacy and authorization and the way that we are securing data is the experience. It's now the time that we need to think how we are bridging a good experience for developers, for users. What are the stakeholders that you feel we need to give a good experience? Everyone. Like, uh, it's like, uh, again, the, uh, there is a, uh, uh, again, good rule of, of the set of rules uh, data privacy by design saying that there should be a positive sum, not zero sum. So you cannot say I'm the user experience will be poor, but the security will be high. You have to provide both at the same time. It's super difficult, of course, but you can say, for, for instance, something like that. Undercovers and building a, a complex policy system that allows you to build a very fine grade control over the records, over the fields and over the what people can do. But what you expose to the people is is not that fine grade. It's just adapted to their uh, needs. So that's the uh, way how we should think about applications. First of all, what users want to do, what are the business requirements? And the second thing is how to build the system under covers so that it's full secure and will allow you to do these kind of things. One of the big examples from my point of view is, and, and this is always a pain, is just whenever you implement something like a Power BI or any BI solution, is that you get a very pretty good role level controls, but you rarely have something like a field level control. And how to implement that if the tool does not allow this? So, in other words, designing an application that allows for that, even though it might not be used, is a key. Yeah, so I I, th I really like this mindset, and I think that's exactly what we need. We need to find a way to educate developer to balance between the experience, or maybe even educate security engineer to balance between the experience and the security that we need to the application, because security without experience is vulnerability. Yep, exactly, exactly. That's the point. If s configuring security is difficult, everyone will get admin access on everything, and that's all. And it's like speaking to people about, you know, least privilege, and I don't care. I, I don't have time to configure that, that thing. So I just give you, for a moment, it's, it's like in a, in a cloud, it's like in AWS. I had this experience many, many times. Something is not working with my S3 bucket. So wait, I will give you admin access to this S3 bucket so that we uh, eliminate that, Always that, 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 that reason of, of, a, of a bug. So I give him admin access, and he says, okay, now it's great. And I, I, t I tell him, I will uh, revoke the full uh, admin access t tomorrow, but I forget about that. And it leaves in a system for long. And that's the, the, that's the problem. Yep. Yeah, it was great to chat with you. A lot of uh, wisdom and insights. Good to meet you here. Good to meet you. Enjoy the conference. Thank you.